Hey guys, it's Bang for Up PC Gamer here. I've had a few requests. Um, some people want to know my exact MSI Afterburner on screen display layout. So I want to make this video, I'm going to detail them in steps so you guys can, uh, if you desire, copy the exact layout I use and uh, hopefully these steps can help you out. So, step one, which is the most obvious one, will be to download the software if you don't already have it. So that would be getting the latest version of MSI Afterburner which is at the date of making this video 4.10 so that's 4.10 for the MSI Afterburner and you're also going to need another piece of software called HW Info 64 now that's the program I'm highlighting here you don't need to worry about looking around the web to, to find these programs I'll put a link in the description just to make it a little bit easy for you Okay, step two, you have to install the software, which is obviously an easy task, but um, I just want to note, when you install MSI Afterburner, it does come bundled with a software called Revertuna Statistics Server. So make sure you install that in tandem with um, MSI Afterburner, as this is um, a critical part of um, the installation process, because you do need Revertuna Statistics Server to work with MSI Afterburner to, to use the OSD function in the way that we want to use it. So once you've got that installed, um, open MSI Afterburner, click on settings, um, select the monitoring tab, and in this tab you'll find a whole host of information from your CPU temperature and your CPU usage to your graphics card temperature and core clock and so on. So there's uh, loads of information you can choose from, but we're just going to use the settings that I use. So I, I like to display my graphics cards information along with the frame rate and CPU usage. So you can move these fields in different order. So as you can see, I have my frame rate at the top at the moment. I can move my frame rate to beam at the bottom. This is important because um, the order you have these is the order you'll have that displayed in your on-screen display. So. I generally like to have my frame rate at the top, my GPU temperature below, graphics card usage, core clock, memory clock, then memory usage. Okay, so we want to finish off step two now, move on. Once you've organized the field as I've displayed, with frame rate at the top all the way down to memory usage being your last field, you'll notice that there's a checkbox called show in on screen display. This is the box I'm highlighting now. What you need to do is tick that box and under the properties tab you'll realize it says in OSD this is allowing you to have this information visible in your on-screen display just having this ticked only monitors the information in this section here which I'm trying to highlight with the mouse cursor so check all of these boxes like I'm doing now and all of this information will now be visible in your on-screen display function. Okay, moving on to step three. We need to click on the on-screen display tab. Here you will see uh, a field which allows you to set up your on-screen display hotkeys which will turn it on or turn it off. So choose any combination of buttons you wish. I personally recommend choosing buttons that don't interrupt you in games which you don't use um, so much so I used end to turn it on page up to show it and page down to hide it again so you can use anything you wish obviously now if you use this software to record your videos then um, it's best to have this box checked which is called show on screen display on captured screenshots and videos so if you don't have this box checked your on screen display will not show up in your videos or your screenshots uh, it's a simple step but a very important one so that's the end of step 3 so step 4 by now you should have had your fields organized just the way I have and all of your fields should be shown in on screen display by checking this box so what I'm going to do now is run a program and show you how it looks and 
how your on-screen display is going to look at this stage of the tutorial. So I'm going to run Unigine Valley. Now as you can see with um, my on-screen display I've got my frames per second at the top, my GPU temperature, my GPU load, my graphics cards uh, core clock, my memory clock and my VRAM usage. And this is of course quite unorganized and I'm going to show you how to change that. So I'm going to quit Unigine Valley, reopen MSI Afterburner. Now I'm going to show you how to rename your fields so you yourself can remember exactly what you're looking at or just a general viewer who is not very familiar with um, MSI Afterburner. So what we're going to need to do is check a box called override group name so for GPU temperature as you can see it says GPU 1 at the moment which is pretty much useless so we're going to change that to GPU temp so now we know we're um, recording the GPU temperature that's what that field is going to be named we're going to change GPU 1 to GPU load. We're going to change core clock to GTX 980. I'm also going to name my memory clock GTX 980 and you will see why in a moment. I'm going to change my memory usage name to VRAM and click OK. So I'm going to open up Unigine Valley once again and you're going to see a, obviously a dramatic difference in how your on-screen display is um, laid out. As you can see we have the frames per second at the top once again. My GPU temperature below it. It's all named and it's uh, perfectly clear and distinguishable and between all the other fields. We have GPU load which you can see the percentage of how much the graphics card is working or being utilized shall I say. Now with GTX 980 I renamed both core clock and memory clock the same name. The reason I did this any field with the on-screen display function that you give the same name will display the information in a horizontal line. Now if I was to rename GTX 980 um, as the core clock and then rename the memory clock GTX 981 this this uh, memory clock information will be below it and because I've got several fields of information I want to display to the viewer I don't want my whole page filled up with information so I try to make it as neat as possible so um, naming a field the exact same name will um, display the information in the horizontal line Another example is if I were to have named VRAM GTX 980 also, this information instead of being below um, the memory clock and core clock, it would have been right beside it. Because um, memory and um, because the core clock and memory clock are quite distinguishable um, by just general knowledge of the core clock being lower than the memory clock, you don't need to worry about your viewer being confused too much. As you can see, 1329 megahertz is my core clock and 3506 megahertz is my memory um, my memory clock which is obviously the effective rate right now it should be running at 1703 megahertz so this is the neatest way possible to do that so that's the end of step four okay moving on to step five which is close to the final step sorry this is taking so long but Obviously, trying to explain all of this is quite complex, so it's taken a little while. But hopefully you guys are following along pretty pretty fine. Um, now that we've got all the GPU information all displayed and in the order we wish, we can now add um, CPU um, information as well. So we'll go back to the monitoring tab. As I expressed earlier, there's loads of information you can choose from. As you can see, there's CPU temperature here. What we're interested in is your CPU usage. Now depending on how many cores or threads your CPU has, um, there will be a certain number of 
um, fields you can monitor. So I'm using an Intel i7-3770. It is a quad-core CPU, but it has hyper-threading. So the PC sees it as eight cores. So I'll have CPU usage one all the way to CPU usage eight. So again, just check all the boxes that you wish to have in your on-screen display. Make sure on-screen display is being checked. So that's CPU one, two, three, all the way down to eight. And now here comes the complex part. If you can remember when I explained earlier about naming, having the same name of the field will keep that information in the same in the same horizontal line. So instead of having CPU usage one to eight all the way down the page, we want to have it in two banks of uh, four. So CPU usage one to four, we're going to give it the same name. So click override group name and we can leave that all as CPU one to four. So what you do is copy and basically paste this name in the first four CPU um, usage tabs. So CPU usage one to four will have the same name. Now five to eight, we're gonna change the name to CPU five to eight. So you, what you wanna do is copy and paste that and name the remaining field CPU five to eight. and click OK. So I'm going to open up Unigen Valley once more and we can see just how that looks. So as you can see CPU 1 to 4 are my first four cores and because we named all, f all the first four cores the same name they're all being displayed in one line which is in my opinion um, the neatest way. Obviously you can um, have it displayed in a way that suits you best but this is the way I like it and obviously the remaining four cores so CPU cores 5 to 8 are also below it because they're all the same name as well so we've got two banks of four which is pretty neat in my opinion so we've got eight cores um, being displayed so we can see in this program particularly it's not really taking advantage of all four cores we can see CPU usage one we can see it's pretty much using two cores or three cores but the rest of the cores are pretty much doing nothing so that's pretty much the end of step five that's how you organize your CPU cores if you've only got um, four cores then you would only need to do this to CPU one to four you won't need to worry about doing anything else Okay, the last part of this video is showing you how to add some additional CPU information to your on-screen display. And that's where HWinfo64 comes in. So open that program, click run, it should start up. Um, you click this cog wheel, which is the settings tab. What you need to do now is click custom and you need to find your CPU clock speed um, field. I've already renamed my field. This used to be core one out of the four cores of the Intel i7-3770 and all of these fields record the clock speed. So all you really need to, really need to do is display one field which will determine your CPU speed really. So I renamed my first core CPU speed so here's your original label what you need to do is rename it to whatever you wish once you've done that click rename and that will rename that field so you click OK now you have this tab called OSD RTSS means real Revitrina statistics server that's just all in brackets what you need to do is make sure you find that same field you've just renamed so that would be I renamed mine to CPU speed 
what you need to do is make sure you have these two boxes checked show value in OSD and show label in OSD the label is the name you've given it which is CPU speed the value is the, the actual megahertz of your processor which is needs to also be in the on-screen display as well so have both of these checked and the next time you load up a program which is Unigine Valley which I'm using you will have your processor clock speed in your on-screen display function as well so that's pretty much it guys that's how I organize my on-screen display function there is one more thing but it's uh, it's more of a personal taste so I'm just going to quickly cover this and wrap this up uh, what you need to do is open your Rebatuna statistics server and click on raster 3D mode under the on-screen display rendering mode you'll see there's a little drop down box I used here you can basically choose your font and how you want it in bold, italic or regular I use Verdana font and I use that in bold I find that this um, shows up in videos um, pretty clear and obviously you can also change the color of your font by clicking um, on the on-screen display palette you can choose whatever color you wish um, a lot of people are familiar with fraps and that uses uh, yellow um, the second box is the the outer shadow so you can change that color as well so the next time I open up my uh, programs you will see that my on-screen display is in yellow now so you can also customize the color anyway guys that's pretty much all the information I can share with you as this video has been way too long and hopefully this has helped you out if you have any questions just message me and I'll try and get back to you and give you some help so thanks for watching guys